Hello and welcome to BrianStevenson.com. This is Brian Stevenson and today we are configuring the advanced tracking features in the Google Analytics module for Drupal 6. So what are we talking about today? Well first we're going to look at link tracking with Google Analytics events. We're going to look at internal search tracking using the search parameter. And finally, we're going to look at JavaScript performance tweaks to help improve your page load time. Now, we don't have enough time to cover all the advanced settings, so you'll have to watch my other videos. And I'll give you the URL at the end of this video uh, to access those videos. I'm going to make a few assumptions here. First, that you have installed the Google Analytics module. If you need help installing it, you can go out to my website and check out that screencast there. And I'm assuming that you're using Google Analytics module version 2.2 or better. Um, and you can get the latest version by going to drupal.org forward slash project forward slash google underscore analytics. So, what is link tracking? Link tracking will help you track links and click events that direct you to resources outside of the reach of Google Analytics. For instance, uh, you can track outgoing links to another website or web server. You can track mail to links, you know, like email addresses that will launch an email program. And lastly, you can track download links to things like Word documents or PDFs or zip files or any other file that's uh, downloaded outside of your web browser. So let's go ahead and flip over to my web browser to see how we would configure these settings. First you go to Administer, Site Configuration, Google Analytics, and I'll bring you to this page. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll have an option there that says Link Tracking Settings. I've got all of mine checked and you actually have the ability to configure the download links. So if you'd like to track file types that are not listed below, you can just go ahead and add them to the list. Uh, just do a pipe and then the extension and you'll be good to go. So where would I go to track these events here? Well, I would go to Google Analytics and I would go to Content and I would go to Events. Now, you'll notice here that I don't have events on the list here. All I've got are, are uh, the site search. So um, this is actually kind of like a known bug. Um, Google Analytics hasn't fully released uh, the events ability, so you've got to go into it manually. And so you need to go to analytics forward slash reporting forward slash events. And there we go. So uh, here we are. Here are all of the events. And let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here. And as you can see, um, I've got some mail events, some download events, and some outgoing link events. And uh, I can actually drill down and click through to see, well, how many mail events did I have? And there are the email addresses that were clicked on my site. Or I could go to the download events, say view all. And I can actually see that there were, uh, you know, four PDFs, two uh, GZ files, and one doc file, and one MSI. I click on PDF, and it will actually show me which PDFs were downloaded. So you've got quite a bit of flexibility with the um, events tracking. Um, you can even do the outgoing links, and there are all the outgoing links that were clicked from my site. Let's take a look at internal search tracking. So what is internal search tracking? Uh, it will help you see which key phrases your visitors used when searching your website's local search engine. And uh, you'll actually need to do a little bit of tweaking in order to get this to work. Uh, there is actually a search a query parameter called search that needs to be included in your Google Analytics settings. So let's go ahead and flip over to my web browser and have a look at that. So the search settings are right here under your advanced settings track internal search and when you check that box um, there is a little note there that you need to configure the search parameter. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, first we'll go back to uh, my analytics settings and there's an edit link 
over here next to uh, the website I want to configure. Now what you'll see here is an option called site search and right now it says do track site search and if you've never configured it before it, it should say don't track site search so what you want to do is click on the edit link up here and when you scroll down you'll see a little bullet point there that says don't and do you want to check on do and there is the query parameter now you want to type in the word search there because Drupal uses the search query parameter to pass along that information um, within your site and Google Analytics will capture that information so you need to tell Google Analytics where to look for it so type in the word search there and uh, you do have the option to uh, either yes or no strip out the query parameter from the URL and sometimes that's nice if you want to kind of clean up your search results uh, within the um, rest of Google Analytics I've got mine set to no but you're welcome to set that to yes if you'd like and there's an option there uh, do you use categories for site search now I played around with this a little bit and I'm not completely convinced that Drupal is set up to work with uh, categories um, but uh, I might be wrong but uh, I've got that set to no and you just go ahead and click uh, save changes when you're done so what does it look like when you've got everything working here well let's go ahead and take a look here view report content site search and there we go you've got all these abilities uh, to to drill down and and look at your search data um, you've even got some uh, kind of like what if scenarios uh, to kinda you know intuitively drill down in and if you just want the raw details of what was searched you can scroll down to the bottom and see the details and when you can we can view the full report and there you go let's check out the JavaScript tweaks now you've got two things that you can configure you can change the scope and you can change the caching now the scope will help you optimize the page loading time by letting you put the script the uh, the Google script at the top or at the bottom of your page and uh, basically what that ha does is um, when it's at the top uh, it'll load that first before it loads the rest of your page and so you can kinda see a little lag in your page load time so it's recommended that you put uh, it at the bottom and the JavaScript caching will let you optimize page loading time by creating a copy of your Google Analytics JavaScript file on your local web server. So let's flip over to our web browser here. And we'll scroll down to the bottom of the Google Analytics settings. And as you can see, you've got a checkbox there to cache the tracking code locally. And when you check that box, click Save and reload the page, you'll notice that there is something new in your HTML there. It'll say Sites, Default Files, Google Analytics, forward slash GA.js. And that's just a local copy of the file. And uh, you've got the option here to choose between the footer or the header. Uh, unless you have a, a real good reason to uh, put it in the header, you'll you you're probably better off putting it in the footer, uh, just because uh, you know the perceived time for the load of your page will will it'll be perceived to be lower. So um, just keep that to footer unless you have a good reason to put it to header. Okay, that wraps up what we're covering today. Um, but there are more advanced configurations that you'd want to learn about. Uh, you'll want to check out my other video to learn about how to track AdSense ads, uh, how to do some advanced JavaScript tweaks, and how to do, use a little custom PHP code to turn on or turn off the page tracking. Uh, and you can find these advanced configurations using the permalink below. So do you have any questions or comments about this screencast? Please speak up. I'm not good at reading minds, not even my own. And do you have a, a request for a future screencast? Uh, please fill out the contact form. Go to brianstevenson.com forward slash contact. And I just want to say thank you, and I hope to see you on the net.